Hello, this is ITU Telecom TV coming to you from Cairo in Egypt. We are at ITU Telecom Africa and as you can see, it's sunny and it's hot. And I'm here with Perti Johansson, who is the president for the Middle East area for Qualcomm. Perti, welcome. I'd like to put, begin by putting this to you. The theme of this show is about connecting Africa. It's been the theme in several shows in the past. Sometimes companies have taken up the challenge of attempting to connect Africa, other times they've ignored it. This time there seems to be a lot of people on the bandwagon. Is Qualcomm jumping on that bandwagon? What are you bringing to the party? We have been serving the African uh, community for uh, quite a while, for the last 15 uh, years or so, uh, working with uh, the various constituencies, uh, working with the operators, working with the governments, and working with the regulators, and. Uh, and also our partners, uh, the handset uh, manufacturers. Of course, uh, uh, we are the inventor of uh, CDMA technologies, but interestingly, um, CDMA is actually the fundamental technology behind also the, the 3G evolution of GSM. So in this way, we are actually involved with uh, all of the uh, industry and, and all of the operators because uh, the 3G for GSM uh, operators is wideband CDMA, which is CDMA and uh, we obviously have uh, tremendous competence uh, in this area. Now, of course, most of Africa where there is mobile coverage, and mobile is a massive success story in this continent, is based on GSM technology. And, of course, you belong to another camp, CDMA. How relevant is Qualcomm's products and services? Well, it is a very relevant situation. African uh, broadband connectivity is uh, very, very low. Uh, there are different numbers. I think North Africa is a little higher. South Africa is also a little higher. but. Uh, Generally, Sub-Saharan Africa has a very low uh, penetration of uh, uh, broadband, uh, maybe a 1%, and that comes because of the uh, lacking uh, wireline uh, infrastructure. So actually, Africans have an opportunity of uh, leapfrogging uh, into the new technologies, and uh, we firmly believe uh, that uh, the wireless technologies will be the tool for implementing uh, broadband. And um, we are here in uh, our exhibit floor. We are demonstrating uh, our innovation and uh, evolution of uh, the broadband in both uh, CDMA 2000 technologies as well as wideband CDMA, UMTS, HSPA. And we, so we're demonstrating uh, here something called uh, uh, EVDO Rev-B, and we're demonstrating a very comparable uh, technology called HSPA+. Plus. And uh, both of these technologies uh, have incredible uh, data transfer capabilities, up to 40 megabits per second in downlink and 11 uh, uplink. And, uh, and so these are actually provide more capacity, more speed than uh, ADSL or really any other uh, wireless uh, technology. And um, we believe that uh, when the operators uh, provide it, they will come. And we already see a tremendous uh, proliferation of uh, wireless data in uh, countries like uh, Morocco, um, Nigeria, uh, Angola. Of course, South Africa already has uh, like a million wireless broadband subscribers. Of course, the trouble with a lot of uh, new technologies is that they're extremely expensive and Africa cannot always afford new expensive technologies. What about the cost factor here? Yes, I think that has been uh, demonstrated um, uh, WANA, uh, a new operator in uh, Morocco, has been uh, very successful in uh, providing actually fixed wireless uh, service. They effectively have doubled uh, Moroccan fixed uh, wired or wireless uh, um, uh, basic service uh, in one year, maybe 15 months. They have uh, got more than 1.3 million uh, new subscribers and all of these uh, are done at the, the wireline tariff. But I think the, the important part of uh, these new technologies is that um, they are very efficient in uh, both providing data and broadband. So uh, the operators uh, really incur a lot of savings because of these uh, uh, multi-purpose networks, if you will. A lot of Western companies come to Africa and sort of wave the magic wand somewhere and alleviate poverty in a few areas for a while. And the Africans are now saying, look, we don't want this. What we want is to have the creation of wealth and the creation of employment. Do the new 3G technologies that Qualcomm represents provide that? Definitely. There are uh, already signs for this and investments are uh, increasing at a very, very rapid rate. 
you see uh, regional uh, operators being uh, formed and uh, expanding. Uh, you see uh, the MTNs, you see the Zane, you see Oruscom, uh, Etisalat, uh, Sudatel. They are all uh, coming to Africa, making uh, huge investments and uh, setting up uh, operations. And of course, uh, with the scale uh, come the uh, savings. And this is an area where we are really working uh, uh, very, very hard with the industry because our chips are uh, the basis of uh, the mobile handsets and, um, and other devices. And we continue to innovate in our chipset area and keep driving the cost down. We have just introduced something uh, called the single chip, which combines the, uh, the previously required minimum of, of three chips. Uh, in, in a handset or device and uh, with this uh, we are reducing uh, the size, we are reducing the cost, we are reducing the power. Uh, the power is of course very very important because your, your batteries will have to last a little longer in Africa. You, know, you may uh, have power in, un, you know, interrupted or you may not have power at all and so uh, all kinds of innovation is required with uh, solar uh, uh, chargers and, and so on and so forth. But, in all, we see Africa developing uh, extremely well. Um, there's a lot of competition um, in, in very, in very um, important countries like Egypt uh, now has uh, three mobile operators in addition to Telecom Egypt's uh, fixed wireless uh, network on CDMA. Um, Nigeria has already uh, four uh, GSM operators and maybe a dozen CDMA operators, some of them uh, uh, regional and some of them uh, are local and uh, this uh, evolution just uh, uh, goes on and on and I do believe the consumers benefit from it. I think Africa according to ITU statistics uh, now 65 percent of African population has access to voice services and I think the industry's uh, focus is now turning into the uh, data services or really providing broadband and internet access service to uh, the businesses and uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, now you mentioned the difficulties with power supply. What other obstacles are there, do you think, to the easy and quick dissemination of next generation mobile technologies? There are uh, quite a number of obstacles for generating uh, efficient uh, operation and uh, low cost operation uh, for the network operators. And, uh, and some of those are, of course, accessibility of power. Power is very, very um, um, uh, uh, unreliable, if you will. Uh, the backhaul, uh, there is uh, very little fiber in, um, uh, in Africa, so all of the backhaul will have to be done either uh, through microwave or through satellite uh, circuits. And then uh, once you collect all that uh, uh, traffic to a central location you, and you have to go outside of the country, it presents an entirely different uh, problem and uh, particularly East Africa is uh, still uh, not connected to the rest of the world with uh, proper uh, uh, submarine fiber cable unlike West Africa, North Africa and a lot of the um, uh, international circuits will have to go over satellite which is very expensive. In addition of course in, um, as we are in a high technology business CDMA, wideband CDMA, 3G uh, in, uh, in general, it's a, um, the technology is getting more and more complex and it puts a strain on uh, the operator staff to appropriately maintain this, uh, these networks and we are here, we have established engineering uh, centers now in uh, Johannesburg and uh, Dubai and establishing more and we are reaching out to the operators and assisting them in uh, training uh, we have, um, we're in the process of setting a couple of uh, training centers up and um, in the meantime we're providing training from uh, the uh, CDMA University in uh, San Diego and, um, and, and this is very helpful because then the operator personnel are able to adjust the networks, uh, uh, tune the networks if you will and, uh, and make them more efficient. And what about WiMAX? We've not touched the issue, but it's there like the elephant in the corner of the room. Your big competitor, Intel, has put a lot of money behind it. There's a huge amount of hype. What kind of uh, competitor will it be, do you think, within Africa? Well, WiMAX is an OFDMA technology. And it's a very early OFDMA technology. 
Uh, we have also tremendous expertise in OFDMA technologies. We, uh, a couple of years ago, acquired a company called Flareon, which um, implemented um, OFDMA technologies already in Europe very successfully. And we have further continued to develop uh, OFDMA technologies. We have, um, uh, we are the largest contributor, single largest contributor of uh, uh, standardization in uh, the LTE, um, 3GPP LTE um, standardization forum. So we like to think we, we know this technology quite well and we are in the forefront of, uh, of demonstrating this. Um, actually even here in the show we have a OFDMA evolved uh, uh, technology that we are already showing. We have a live system actually in San Diego uh, doing drive around and, and so on. So we, we do analyze this technology and we do um, um, analyze uh, the different versions of this technology. I believe WiMAX uh, has its uh, role in uh, providing uh, uh, fixed uh, pipes to uh, uh, like major enterprises or, or campuses, but I believe that, that um, the mainstream technology for Africa will be 3G. I believe the um, forecast from all the major analysts uh, indicate that uh, by 2012 there will be 1.1 billion 3G subscribers in uh, Africa um, as, and there will only be 60 million WiMAX. Uh, so um, we believe WiMAX has its uh, uh, space um, in the ecosystem um, but it is a niche uh, complementary product. Peter Johansson, thank you very much indeed. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much, Mark.